Good evening, everybody. Sunday Adelijah here from Kiev, Ukraine. Ngoya Sharis, nice to see you again. Almonike, blessings. Eric Osadolo, welcome. Shegu Fatuma, nice to see you. Yep, welcome, welcome, everyone. Well, we are going to have a wonderful, wonderful meeting today. Hadeleke Adeni, welcome. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and, you know, share the link to this message if you don't mind. Let's go ahead and share this program right now. Uh, you have the share button under the video somewhere there in your planchette or in your uh, smartphone, in your iPad. Please go ahead and share the message. To be a joy to have all of you write something for your friends to be able to know what we are talking about what we are doing today we are going to be having a wonderful testimony from a sister Allah Makarovna I think I would just say Allah sister Allah from the church who uh, is going to share a story with us a story of miracle miraculous healing how God delivered her from sickness and uh, how she's now become a deliverer herself how she uh, <laughs> how she was healed and now she's become a healer that's who what god wants us to be to be healed so that we could be healers to our world so uh we we'll introduce you right now to uh allah is here with us Здравствуйте, пастор Сандей. Здравствуйте, дорогие телезрители. Ну что ж, какая ваша история? Мне очень приятно быть здесь. Это... Да, для меня очень большая честь э, рассказать свою историю, своей жизни, как я ну, пришла к Богу и как, какой у меня был духовный рост, и, связанный с посольством и с учениями пастыря. Для меня это очень большая честь. Однажды мне Бог сказал, что слава, она должна принадлежать Дому Отца. И моя жизнь, она просто наполнена славой Божьей. И я благодарна Богу и пастырю Сан saying that I'm, I'm so happy that I'm able to share my testimony because uh, through the teachings of Pastor Sunday and this church, my life has totally been transformed and thanks to that, I have to be here in this church to testify what God has done for me and uh, I want the glory to come to the Father. The Bible says that the glory must belong to the Father. So the glory of what God has done for me, I want it to belong to the Father. So that glory, I'm returning to the Father right now. Ну, я хочу рассказать свою историю. Я уже 22 года как с, Бого, с Господом верующая. И покаялась в 94-м году. Это в дочерней церкви, которая под посольством Божьим. Yep. Uh, I was, I've been born again now for 22 years in, in one of the daughter churches of the Embassy of God Church. Да, мы ну, пришли к Богу, потому что у нас была проблема со здоровьем дочери, и мы начали, попали мы в церковь, вот, и начали ходить в церковь, начала служить Богу. I came to the Lord actually because I was calling for, uh, for my daughter, you know, she had a health issue, so thanks to that problem with, the do with my daughter, we came to know the Lord. Бог открылся для меня, и я с первого дня как бы была очень горячим человеком. So when Jesus came to our life, uh, we were actually gave my life immediately, and I became very committed to the Lord. Через три месяца, когда мы попали в церковь, я начала вести домашнюю группу, стала лидером домашней группы. So in a month's time, I was already a leader. Я реально еще не могла проводить молитвы покаяния, не могла молиться. Я просто делала на домашних группах организацию. Ко мне приходили люди верующие, и я просто распределяла работу как бы домашней группы. Ты будешь молиться, ты будешь говорить слово, а я как бы предоставила помещение и была лидером домашней группы. Yeah. 
she said I was so on fire when I came to the Lord that uh, you know I was doing everything I was going to every service doing committed in every way and she said when the pastor you know this was a daughter church one of our 500 churches in Ukraine that time and uh, so one of uh, the pastors just noticed that I was so committed and the pastor said you know what you are more committed than people who have been coming to this church for years and that's how I became a leader after one month of a, as a believer и вот такая горячая любовь по Богу, ну, ко мне на домашнюю группу приходило по 30 человек. I had 30 people in my home group that time. У нас э, реально проходили чудеса исцеления на домашних группах. Не было где яблоко упасть, люди просто бежали на домашнюю группу. So that was the place where I began to discover the power of God. Because I just discovered that it's only God that could do these miracles because God started healing people. I mean, can you imagine, I was only one month in the Lord and I was the leader of the home group and all these 30 people were belonging to my home group and they were coming with all their problems and their, and their needs. So, you know, and God was healing them. And that which means to say, we should not be using miracles to be our, our, um, our uh, uh, carte blanche. Uh, we should not use miracles as our, um, you know, credit, no, visit card, uh, credit card, so to say, our credit history. We should not use uh, miracles as our only qualification. We should, you know, know that knowing God is superior. Because if you just go for miracles, I was, I didn't even know anything. And God was using me to do all the miracles, healing all kind of people from all kind of di diseases. And, you know, and pick my home group was just jammed full of people. Because I had a child's faith, you see. But today, some people use that as their platform. That miracles, God does miracles through me. Whereas they, they've not known the Lord. Just like I had not known the Lord, and even though God was still doing miracles through me. Я начала, у меня был духовный рост такой, и я начала делать все. Это была дочерняя церковь в Черкасской области, и я помогала все пастырю, была лидером домашней группы, вела женское служение, проводила все молитвы перед служением, дневная молитва, была деканом библейской школы. So eventually I kept on growing, I became an assistant to my pastor, I became uh, you know, the dean of our Bible school, so I kept on growing. И у нас здесь в посольстве Божьем в Киеве начали проводиться посты. Я постоянно приезжала на все посты. Зимний, летний пост, постоянно посещала эти посты. So I was very active. I then pastor, my our local pastor, because we were from another state, it's like she was one, one of the states in Ukraine. Uh, so our pastor recommended her to become to become one of the delegates that will be coming to the conferences here in Ukraine, in Kiev, where I was, where the central church was. Я получила откровение, что надо начинать свою церковь, то есть в соседнем городе. И я как бы начала в соседнем городе, это город Звенигородка, церковь. Сколько лет уже верующих тогда было? Ну, это где-то года четыре. So after four years of being a Christian, I started a church. I pioneered a church in one of the villages, uh, one of the small towns near our city, in our state as well. Да, и мы продолжали как бы работать с Богом, продолжали строить церковь. Потом получила откровение, что я должна перейти на социальную работу, а мужу передать церковь, чтобы он был церковь. Eventually, my husband gave his life. He later on became a leader in the church, and he later on became the pastor of that church. And I was doing more of social, uh, social pastoring. We have what we call in, a, in the Embassy of God, pastor, social pastors. Social pastors are pastors who are pastoring people in the places where they live. So a lot of people might not be coming to church, but maybe they are working in a factory. Let's say they are working in the, in the bank. And in that, in that blank bank, maybe you have 400 or 200 workers. And so we have a pastor there situated in that bank. So during the break and after work or before work, so all those people in the bank would go there. They will study the Bible for one hour and we will pray for another one hour or 30 minutes, you know, things like that. And so that's the kind of social pastoring that she was doing. Some people would do that for 
uh, widows or senior citizens' homes or uh, orphanages or, you know, just places where people are confined, where there's a group, large number of people who don't come to church, who might be too busy because they are working or they don't believe in going to church, but we could go to them and actually pass to them where they belong or where they are living or where they are situated. That Those are the pastors we call social pastors because they go to the people where they are. Я начала, я зарегистрировала общественную организацию Синегородки, называется Светло Родины. Вот. И, и начала думать, как мне начинать вот эту общественную деятельность. То есть я э, в послушании пастырю Сандею думаю, я буду начинать общественную деятельность, с чего начать. И мы начали работу по школах. Я начала проводить уроки по негативным явлениям в школах. One of the uh, things that I was doing, I was as a social pastor, I started because in this country, uh, the church is separated from the state. So like you are not allowed to go and preach the gospel directly in the churches, I mean in the schools. Uh, the school is separated from the state and the church is separate. Sorry, this church is separated from the state, which means the school, the church will not have the right to go directly into, um, into the schools, for example, and begin to preach the gospel. So what we, we normally do is that we start a, uh, a, an NGO, a civil society movement that is propagating values, values for the youth, values for the teenagers, and teaching them principles on how to cope with the challenges of life, how to cope with the challenges of teenage years, how to cope with the challenges of uh, father, parents, I mean, sons, father relationship or children parents relationship also you know cope with the challenges of um you know you know the uh, peer pressure and all those kind of topics how to cope with the challenge of smoking drinking um you know hazardous uh, uh habits and uh, dangerous habits so we have our movement uh, a social organization that we registered and on the basis of that social organization coming with solution so we were allowed to go into schools even though if we were to come as a church we would not be allowed to go into the schools but because we are a social organization ngo that is just propagating values and that is having teaching curriculum and programs that are value-based but not not totally religious even though we know they're from 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 the bible but we put them in in the uh psychological and sociological language for schools so were permitted so we started doing this not just for my city where i was but for the whole region that we were in короткое время я начала сама работать по школам, а потом э, сформировалась у нас команда. И мы, и, да, и мы за короткое время мы охватили все школы города, все школы района нашего региона, и мы просто э, насколько были активны и насколько мы были э, ну, в авторитете, что нас постоянно кругом приглашали. Мы были в авторитете в обществе, в, в райдерж администрации, видели свет, то есть везде мы за ну три года подряд я была лучшим волонтером Черкасской области. Все призы, все награды у нас были. То есть мы очень активно работали по школам, очень хорошая у нас была команда. Вот. She said, "Can you imagine? It? I started an organization, which it was just a social organization, you know, that was being sponsored by me, by my family, by my friends. So we work to provide money for our social organization. We sponsor it by ourselves. So I go to work, I get money from part of my salary. So part of my salary is dedicated for this NGO to promote the NGO, to make the NGO grow. And so, but from that small beginning." We were able to cover all schools in our town. They're all schools in our uh, local government. Then we covered all schools in our state. And for three consecutive years, I was voted the most, the number one NGO, the most active uh, citizen of our state for three consecutive years because you know we were covering all 300 schools or so that were in our states just you know with the gospel of the uh, with the, you know we don't call it gospel but with the principles of the kingdom of god you, you know by using 
social 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 organization. И у нас продолжался рост. И вот в 2010 году наша семья по семейным обстоятельствам мы переехали в Киев. У нас так и есть в Черкасской области церковь, и мы проводим там общественную работу. И здесь, в Киеве, опять Бог, я видела, как Бог начал вести. Я стала помогать пастырю Боси, я стала в домашней группе пастыря Боси, потом вошла в группу домашнего пастыря Сандея, вот, начала писать контрольные, начала читать книги, начала расти в своем мышлении, то есть расширяться в своем мышлении, изменять свое мышление, то есть менять себя. Я начала менять себя, я начала работать над собой, потому что я раньше как бы мало работала над собой, я больше занималась таким, а теперь вот как бы было направлено именно на, на саморазвитие, на свой рост, когда я попала в домашнюю группу уже пастыря Сандея. Uh, so, eventually we left our city because, you know, we, we, our family moved from that state. And we came over to the capital here in Kiev, where we have our central church and where Pastor Sunday is the senior pastor and Pastor Bosse is the pastor of the big of the central church. And I entered into uh, Pastor Bosse's team and I started helping Pastor Bosse. Then I joined uh, Pastor Sunday's home group as well. And uh, so I started growing because I discovered that even though where I was coming from, I was a leader and I was a star, but here when I get, got to Kiev, I knew that I needed to learn a lot as well. So I started learning and started growing, uh, growing, growing uh, personally. Потом начались ретриты у пастыря Сандея. Мы начали посещать, нас вся семья верующая, и начали посещать ретриты. Муж начал посещать ретриты, то есть начался у нас духовный рост еще больше. Люди начали наши приезжать сюда, в церковь из Черкасской области, тоже посещать. Там начали люди расти, мы там начали проводить. Мы вошли в общественный совет у нас в городе Звенигородке, и общественная деятельность у нас тоже также продолжалась дальше. Of course, our activities, everything that I started in the city that we were in, everything continued definitely. Uh, we had our, our disciples continuing with the church and with the social work that we started. So we started working with the government eventually. Uh, and, you know, we started doing uh, all the work that the church is supposed to be doing. We were working with the government councils on the local level. And, um, yeah, we were just having kingdom impact through social я хочу рассказать еще за сына. У нас есть еще сын, тоже он здесь, тоже в Киеве. И когда он приехал сюда в институт, поступать в институт, сразу первое, что он сделал, он пошел в церковь посольства здесь и начал ночью ходить и переводить проповеди пастыря Сандея на английский язык. Да, с, первого, ну, с первых дней он начал просто <laughs> днем мучиться, а ночами переводить проповеди по Сандай на английский язык. Молодец. He was talking about their son. They have a son that came together with them to Kiev, and he was also involved with the ministry, and he, he himself uh, volunteered to translate. Pastor Sunday was not preaching in English those days. Just now, Pastor Sunday is preaching in English, but uh, those days, Pastor Sunday will only preach in Russian language. And many people were demanding for Pastor Sunday's messages in English. So Pastor, my son was translating Pastor Sunday's messages to English on the computer and, you know, posting it on the internet. И он посещал, однажды он посетил, посетил школу по процветанию. Пастор Сандай проводил школу по процветанию. И он как бы послушание, вот как бы начал вести бюджет, и он отделил конкретно финансы для миссионерства. И лично для миссионеров сеял денег, миссионеры, которые уезжали в другие города поднимать церкви, он лично подходил и сеял финансы. So uh, eventually, uh, this our son began to follow Pastor Sunday's teaching, especially Pastor Sunday's teaching on uh, finances. There was a series of teaching that Pastor Sunday did on finances, and you you all know about that because that's where I got the book "Money Won't Make You Rich." And so God started blessing the son, and he became a sponsor for missionaries. So he himself, just out of God leading him, he started. A, going to, to all the missionaries that the church was sending out 
uh, to villages or countries or other places and our son began to sponsor them and give them money for you know going out to serve the Lord. И Бог мне как бы однажды показал в слове, что он до 30 лет будет уже миллионером здесь. Wow. И ну, это реально осуществилось. Он уже где-то 15 лет в Киеве, и ему вот сейчас 32 года, и он реально до 30 он стал миллионером. So because of this commitment of our son, can you, so that he came as a young man, maybe 19 years old or so, and uh, he started helping the uh, pastor Sunday and started interpreting his messages and just doing it out of his own accord. And then because of that, he had access to Pastor Sunday's teaching on, uh, on finances. So he said, and she said that God told her that, you know, because you have started to use your money to sponsor missionaries, that you are using your money to help uh, the work of God, that God is going to make you, she was telling the son, that God told her that, that you become a millionaire uh, before the age of 30. And now our son is 32 years old, and before he was 30 years, he was already a millionaire. And, and uh, so that is uh, the principle of God. We thank God that he came to, to, to the church with us, and he was, you know, learning, and he was trying to help and serve, and thanks to his willingness to serve, he ran into the teachings of Pastor Sunday that, you know, gave him this knowledge. And then he had the right heart to be able to use his money, not just for himself, not just for his family and egocentric reasons, but to promote the kingdom of God, to promote missionaries and to help missionaries. And as a result, God blessed his efforts. And as a young man, he's already so, 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 so successful and prosperous. Сейчас он тоже продолжает сеять финансы, он сейчас финансирует два детских дома Класс. здесь в Киеве, да, и вот когда у нас начались военные действия, вот то они где-то с друзьями купили 4 или 5 туда машин, они покупали туда и термобелье, они покупали туда и бронежилеты, и оптические какие-то дорогие приборы, то есть они полностью, ну, все, что могли, они полностью как бы финансировали угу. и сейчас финансируют. So right now, our son is still a committed Christian. He's taking charge of uh, two, two orphanages that is, is, uh, in, that is sponsoring, that is uh, raising up children, you know, children without parents. And he's, uh, that's what he's using his money for. That's what is one of the things he's decided to commit his finances for. And recently in Ukraine, Ukraine started having some conflict like a war, like a civil war in Ukraine and mm, conflict with past, uh, with uh, Russia. And uh, so uh, uh, my son and his business partners decided to become patriotic citizens and to take care of their country. So he and his colleagues started sponsoring the army. So they started buying uh, military cars for the army, uh, weapons for the army, and just helping the government because when the war is going on, the government doesn't always have enough money to sponsor the army. So it's sometimes, it's, sometimes it takes the willingness of the citizens for the citizens to be able to support their country and their government. So, uh, you know, God put it in his heart and he's supporting the government of, of Ukraine and the army and he's still sponsoring the army up to now. Uh, but uh, some of you are watching this. I think some of these testimonies should be a blessing to you. And so if you have not yet shared a link to this message, uh, please look under your video. Look under the video and uh, you could press the share button. You could press the share button. It's, it, I think you, it might be worthwhile for you to be able to show to some of your colleagues or friends or brothers and sisters or even children. Uh, so let's um, go ahead and share the, the message. And uh, I hope you have been blessed as we listen to Allah's uh, testimony further. Я реально вижу, что ну в этом рука Божья, потому что ну молодой парень, мальчик приехал сюда в Киев сам, он в пять институтов поступал, в один поступил, ну я вижу, как рука Божья его поднимала, и он сейчас женат, у него двое детей, и когда они уезжают на отдых, они постоянно кучу книг по стрессандея берут с собой читать, и жена и и он постоянно читают да. So uh, I see that only as a hand of God. 
uh, he's a, you know, like a small young guy. He came from a small village or a small town. And thank God we moved to, to Kiev that time, to the city. Because, you know, we obeyed God, moved our family to the city. And we didn't know that that was one of the ways God was going to promote him. But, uh, you know, now it's not just successful as a businessman. It's a successful family man as well. He's married with two kids. And uh, they always take their vacation. And when they're on the vacation, the, the vacation is just to take out time to study Pastor Sunday's materials and Pastor Sunday's book. So that's how they, they fortify themselves, they improve themselves, and they, yeah, they improve their qualities. Тоже читают эти книги. Он, э, друзья неверующие вместе по работе, и он постоянно им приносит эти книги. Они все читают в офисе книги пастыря Сандея постоянно. And uh, they are, they, that they do is based on uh, the principles of Christ and God. The principles. He said she was saying that in their businesses, uh, even the unbeliever part, unbelieving partners or customers that he has. Is making them to read Pastor Sunday's books. <laughs> да, я теперь хочу возвратиться уже дальше к, к себе. Ну, то есть я начала посещать. Well, that just by the way, I, I just diverted a little bit by talking about my son. But you know, let me just keep on talking about my story. Я начала посещать ретриты, и вот однажды я собиралась на ретрит. Это год назад я собиралась по Сандею ехать на ретрит. И утром у меня случился сердечный приступ. Ни с того, ни с сего. Я никогда не лежала в больницах, я никогда не жаловалась на Сколько сердце. Год, год назад, угу. ровно год назад. И я как бы у меня было такое состояние, как неправильно работает сердце. Wow. Я собираюсь все-таки на ретрит, думаю, все пройдет, все хорошо, но я почувствовала, что я сейчас потеряю сознание. Hmm. И я позвонила к сыну, сын, меня быстро, сын быстро приехал и завез меня в клинику Борис на обследование. Mm -hmm. И там мне сказали, что нужно ложиться в больницу и прокапать, потому что у меня аритмия, и надо ну, пролечить, mm -hmm. пролечить мою аритмию. Okay, и, дальше, дальше, да, дальше. и потом мы проконсультировались в одного врача, во второго, в третьего врача, и я попала на стационар, мне поставили очень нехороший диагноз, э, умирает у меня сердце. И назначили мне на 18 декабря оперативное вмешательство. Это прошлый год. Hmm. She and in the morning, and I discovered that I couldn't, but my heart, something was wrong with my heart. And I, th I felt I was losing my mind, and I was losing consciousness. And uh, so I, I just, I just know that this was serious. So I was planning to say, I was, no, maybe I would just go by faith, but I saw that, no, I was going to fall. So I called my son. So he came, took me to the hospital, and then in the hospital, they uh, examined me, and said that my heart was dying. My heart was dying. Когда я попала в больницу, меня положили в стационар, я два раза там потеряла сознание. Мне было очень плохо, я потеряла сознание. У меня был пульс до 120, то есть и давление очень высокое. И за сутки меня вывели с этого состояния, вот, и поставили вот такой мне нехороший диагноз. И врач вошел ко мне в палату и говорит, без меня меня женили. В общем, мы с вашим сыном решили и постановили на 18 декабря вам делать оперативное вмешательство. So that was in December 2015, and uh, the, the, the doctors examined me, and because I had lost consciousness twice while I was in the hospital, and they said it was a very serious condition. It was a rare disease. Вы сказали, это резкая болезнь, да? Да, это вообще просто на пустом месте. Ну, это частая болезнь или распространенная болезнь? Она распространенная, да. Окей. So it's it's it and I had lost my consciousness two times in the hospital, and the only way was to change the another pamia club, and I understood. Нет, это надо прижать сосуды в сердце. Ah, okay. Yeah, they needed to. I think. Art, one of the arteries needed to be repaired. So they needed to repair the artery of the heart. And uh, so 
No, so I needed operation. Without an operation, they could not get to the artery, the artery that was uh, that was weak and that needed to be changed or repaired or strengthened. They couldn't get there without uh, without uh, a, an operation, a surgery. И э, меня вот эта фраза, что врач сказал, без меня меня женили, она не соответствовала своим, с моим мировоззрением, потому что пастор Сандай нас учил креативному мышлению, стратегическому мышлению, и чтобы мы сами думали и принимали за себя решения, и еще принимали решения за других. А тут э, навязывают мне, приняли без меня решение делать неоперативное вмешательство. Я просто внутри не согласилась с этим. The doctor said, we decided, we consulted uh, with your son and with the doctors and we decided that that is the only way for you to be healed of this sickness or you will not survive it. And she said she didn't like the idea that they didn't even consult with her. Well, how could you consult with everybody else but not with me? You consulted with my son, you consulted with my doctors, you consulted with everybody else but not with me. So she was saying that, but this is not our pastor taught us. Pastor taught us to be thinking people, to be people who have critical thinking, people who have uh, analytical mind, people who have strategic uh, mindset, uh, people who examine everything, people who analyze every situation, people who, uh, you know, take informed decisions. And so she said, but these people didn't even give me the information on what basis you took your decision. You know, because when you are sick, it's easier when you are panic in a, in a panic state for you to just agree that they should do anything. But, you know, I was thinking, no, this is against the principle that we've been taught in the church, that we've been taught that we should examine everything, we should question everything, we should challenge everything, we should query everything, we should analyze everything, we should put the facts together. So, and I was saying, no, I would, I'm not going to agree to just do the surgery without my own understanding. I need to have an understanding before I do the surgery. So I refused. Я решила не сдаваться с этим, не согласиться с этим. Я в отделении у людей, которые лежали приблизительно с таким диагнозом, расспросила все. Эти люди рассказали, что уже по четыре раза, по пять раз им делают такое вмешательство, и им вообще не помогает. И это очень дорогостоящая процедура, и они уже дома собираются продавать, потому что это ничего не помогает, и надо продолжать и продолжать это делать. Как бы люди попали в зависимость. И я решила идти другим путем. Я решила искать, потому что я верю во всемогущего Бога. И мой Бог, Он всемогущий. Он Бог, Бог, который всегда выводил меня с любых ситуаций, в которые мы попадали, со здоровьем. Ну, с любыми проблемами Бог всегда выводил. И я верю в Бога, который может все. И я решила уповать на Бога и идти другим путем. Я начала искать, я начала обращаться к другим врачам, и Бог послал мне одного доктора, профессиональный доктор. Она мне все объяснила, она рассказала, как устроен организм человека, и она сказала, не надо этого делать, а просто надо пойти другим путем. Просто, просто нужно свой организм как бы наполнить витаминами и минералами. То есть... So, so she said... Because of that, she refused to do the operation immediately and she said, let me first of all do my own research. So she started doing her own research and she said, I spoke to everybody that was in that hospital, in that particular department of the hospital that was having similar condition. And uh, I discovered that most of the people that have ever been operated on were, uh, regarding that condition, that most of these people had to be operated on again that uh, some of them who were in the hospital had actually been operated on two times, three times, four times. They were coming for the second, third, fourth operation and surgery. So, which means surgery doesn't bring uh, a solution. And she said, then I knew that, thank God, I, I've been taught well, that I needed to question everything, and I needed to investigate everything and research everything. And that, uh, thanks to that, I discovered that I needed to begin to research other methods and other ways that this 
kind of sicknesses could be resolved. Uh, the other ways that this kind of you know, diseases could be addressed. So I started looking for alternative means of uh, curing this kind of heart condition. And uh, as in the, in, the, in the process of my search, then God did a miracle. You see, God, sometimes we are expecting God to do miracles just because we pray. And some people die that way. But God normally sometimes will not do miracles until you have done your best, until you have done your research, until you have done your own work, until you have done your due diligence, until you have done your analysis, until you have done what you could humanly do from your own part. Until you have done your own part, then God will now see that you've done your best and it will come, uh, it will come through for you. But, uh, you know, before, before, we, before, uh, before I did, uh, before we do our own best, it's not fair to be asking just for God to do. Sometimes God will do the miracles even without you doing anything. But in my own case, I needed to do the research. I needed to, you know, find out all information about this sickness, about the disease, diseases, and find out other methods that these things are being healed and cured. And uh, so I ran into God, did a miracle. He brought a doctor, a, 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 you know, a unique doctor into my way, into my path. And this doctor told, you know, began to tell me that, no, you really, maybe you would not, because she, is, this doctor is a doctor that will use natural means for, to kill rather than uh, surgery. So this doctor said, uh, you could actually you know, heal yourself. You could support your organism, your body, by uh, eating right. If you begin to eat right, and if you begin to use a lot of vitamins and a lot of fruits, and a lot of natural food that you could actually cure your, you know, your body could cure itself, and that uh, you will not need to be, you'll be making the same mistake all these other people are making. That you will do one operation now, and the next five years or ten years you will have to come again for the second operation, or then the next ten years you come for the third one. And instead of doing that, why don't you just fix it by eating right and uh, you know just being informed. Я так благодарна Богу, что я нахожусь в церкви живого Бога. И за меня церковь молилась, за меня молился пастор Сандей. Он сказал, что у меня все будет хорошо. За меня молилась пастор Бося и сказала, что это у вас перед огромным прорывом. Я думаю, Господи, здесь хоть бы живой остаться, потому что состояние было такое, ну, плохо мне очень было. Я реально ездила в транспорте, и я молилась, чтобы мне не потерять сознание. Так у меня с сердцем было плохо. И однажды, один день мне было очень плохо, и э, я попросила мужа, чтобы он за меня помолился, и на группе у пастыря Боси, чтобы помолились за меня. Вот. И муж перезвонил мне и говорит, э, через пять минут после того, как я к нему перезвонила, сказала, что мне плохо, он перезвонил и сказал, «Открой римлянам 4 главу, 18 стих». Библию. И я стояла возле окна, мне было очень плохо. Я открыла Библию, и там ну, вместо Писания, что Авраам, он, будучи стар, не помышлял, что тело его омертвело, и утроба Сарина в омертвении, но он прибыл тверд вере, воздал славу Богу, и что Бог силен исполнить обещанное. Я прочитала это слово, и я получила исцеление моментально. Бог меня через слово исцелил. Я поднимаю глаза, я прочитала это слово, поднимаю глаза, солнце светит ярко. Mm. День такой прекрасный. У меня сердце перестало болеть. Mm. Вообще, я реально, я получила исцеление. И потом... Uh, you know, I told you that I re rejected the operation, the surgery. So I didn't do this. I didn't go for the surgery, but I was, uh, uh, <laughs> I was, I was, I, I went. I decided to, you know, to go to use the natural way, the natural eating and you know, kill process. So uh, even though I was eating right, I was. Uh, feeding you know, myself well, the, the, treating the heart very well with the natural means, but still, you know, it was not totally healed. It was, I was still feeling, you know, I could still, I was not, I didn't go for the operation, I didn't do the surgery, but things were still difficult for me. I was still, it was difficult for me to walk uh, hard been in the city or to do heavy work and things like that. Things were not easy, but 
One, the person, but one day I was feeling very bad. But my husband was is a member of Pastor Boss's team, uh, one of Pastor Boss's groups, uh, home groups, uh, yeah, mentorship team. And wow, I'm sorry. There is somebody that is having heart problem right now as we are talking. Uh, and God wants to heal that person right now. I'm seeing it right now. It's a, somebody is having problem with the heart. Maybe very similar to what she is talking about. I don't know what that is. You have problem with your heart. Please put your hand there now. Holy Ghost wants to heal you. And I want to hear the report. I want to hear somebody come back with the story. You have a serious problem. Maybe even much more serious than this lady's problem. But you have that problem in your heart right now. And you and, and God is he wants to heal you now. God wants to do a supernatural operation for you. Yeah, the person has heard. You've just responded to what I'm saying. The person has responded. And God's healing power is going through that person's body right now. God's virtue is being released over that person that is having that heart problem right now. And don't let just talk about the heart problem. Let's talk about any situation you might be having. There's another person that is having blood coming out of your nose. You have blood coming out of your nose. Maybe that is out of a result of high blood pressure or something. But God is healing you too right now in the name of Jesus. And there is another person that is having this problem with the muscles. The muscles of your, it's like you have their beard giving you a dirty beating in your spine uh, towards your shoulder and God wants to heal that person right now also in the name of Jesus be healed in Jesus name another person that uh, you're having problem in your fingers and you cannot really hold a fist God is healing you now in Jesus name that person that is having problem in your neck area also God is healing you right now in Jesus name that person that is having some pressure in your head is that you are in a bad depression a bad depression very bad depression in Jesus name in Jesus name be healed right now we rebuke all the work of Satan and all forms of oppression and sicknesses that are torturing your mind from head to toe let the virtue of God be released upon you right now and let God's healing power cure deliver and set you free from every kind of attack especially that person from the earth we cancel that operation we pray that god himself will do it in a supernatural manner right now be healed in jesus name another person is having problem with a, a, uh, a uh, in your in your in your uh in your liver area uh, maybe it's, yeah no kidney kidney god is healing those kidney right now in jesus name and a man that is having prostate you're having prostate it's not like a cancer yet it's not developed to the cancer level but it's on that level it's growing and god is healing that pr prostate right now in jesus name there is another person that is having you cannot hold you know you have these muscles your muscles are losing strength not the hand, just like the hand is affecting the hand too, but it's actually coming from from the, your hand and your your arm, you know. So you are losing strength in that hand because of the muscles, the weakened muscles. So God is healing you right now. So the anointing of God. There is another lady that is there, and you have this situation in your left breast, and it's a little growth, but it's expanding, it's growing, and the pain is becoming bigger. In Jesus' name, we rebuke that growth. We command it to disappear. In Jesus. Name. Then. and uh, we we release the power of God upon everyone that is watching us now and that are going to watch us later on another person that is having skin disease you have diseases of uh, skin disease in Jesus name we proclaim healing to you in Jesus name now the person I was talking about with the skin disease is you know it's just in your body around your hand but there's a girl a young lady that's very embarrassed and you don't want to go out anymore because you have some rashes in your face and you are so embarrassed because of those rashes god is healing that person right now also in jesus name so we release the anointing of god the power of god to touch everyone to minister to you beyond your expectations and even if you are not there right now that person that is going to watch this thing later but you have towards the middle not middle but a, a little bit just under the middle of your spine you have some some challenge there it's like one of your vertebrae you know is 
It's giving you problem all the time. You cannot, when you sit down, you cannot lean backward. When you, when you lie down, you know, you, you have to lie on your stomach. And, and God is healing that person right now. So be healed in Jesus' name. There is another person that is watching right now. You have, um, uh, you have lost, is it, between 40 to 60% of your hearing in your life, right ear. You lost your hearing in your life right here. In Jesus' name, we command that hearing to be restored right now in Jesus' mighty name. We release the healing virtue of God upon you that God's power will descend upon you and set you free in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for everybody that is watching now that we are believing God for them. There's like somebody that is praying for cataract. You are, you are, I think you are not praying for yourself. You are probably praying for another person who has cataract in the name of Jesus we command that cataract to be ejected from that eye in Jesus name and I think it's the cataract of the right eye in Jesus name be healed right now in Jesus name there is a person that is praying for the mother you have a mother you are living or you brought your mom or your grandmother or so somebody of 80 something years old I think it's 86 year old woman that is living with you or you came to see her or you I think she's staying with you and and she started walking poorly these days and she she almost cannot lift her, her right leg properly she cannot walk the legs are not supporting her very well so in Jesus name we are releasing the power of God upon that old woman and we are proclaiming healing upon her in Jesus mighty name that person that's having some problem right there like a bond you have in your lips in Jesus name be healed right now in Jesus name that person that's having problem with the with the index finger this right hand index finger in jesus name be healed in jesus name so father thank you for touching and ministering to all your people that are going to watch this this it doesn't matter when they will watch it if you are going to watch in a year in 10 years time let this healing who there's another person that is having you broke your hearing drum or what you call it eardrum you just something just smashed your eardrum and i i think it was a big ball or something like that hit your head and and it's just like that thing burst open or something or you know and it just just messed up your hearing so in jesus name be healed also in a supernatural manner the person that is having that that uh, that knee you have a problem in fact it's like you have you have a broken knee is that an accident? I'm trying to figure out. Is that a car accident or a, a, a sports accident? One kind of an accident. I'm seeing two instances right now. I'm seeing both car accident and I'm seeing a uh, uh, sports accident. So in Jesus' name, but we command those knees to be repaired, to be repaired. I call forth God's healing power to repair those knees right now for you in a supernatural way in Jesus' name. And the person that is having damage you have a damage in your head your head toward this side of the head towards the center but not quite the center you know to, more, more to the right in jesus name we proclaim healing to that head and anything that I, I, that is causing like a uh what do you call it when you lose yourself you, you lose consciousness you, you're almost like uh, uh epileptic seizure they are not epileptic but just seizure makes you to have some feet uh, yeah feet in jesus name we command those feet to cease and to stop and is that an is was that an operation that was done upon your head or your brain and still it didn't remove the problem and but the seizure and the feet still happens from time to time we we set you free in jesus name and the person that is having arthritis of the fingers we set you free in jesus name as well Father, we thank you for ministering to your people today. And there is a, a tremendous healing anointing in this place today. And and uh, and maybe because she's a healing minister, but there is an, a, a tremendous healing anointing here today. And uh, and I think we need to hear her testimony to the end. So I think where I stopped was that she, yeah, her husband went to Pastor Bosse. That's my wife, Pastor Bosse's home group. So, you know, just just do mentorship group, uh, what Pastor Bosse was conducting. And while she was there, she felt very bad. And so she, he, he, she had to call. She was at home. She was feeling very bad. She was like the, 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 the ache 
the heartache was coming back and then she called the husband and said call, tell pastor boss and the team to pray for me so they started praying for her in the team in the in pastor boss's uh, home group why they were praying either pastor boss or one of them got a word and she the husband went out of the prayer came to call her and said we got a word for you right now romans 4 18 romans 4 18 i think that's where it says that even though the body of sarah was like a dead like like dead was as good as dead but yet uh, uh, they believed against against belief against faith uh, against faith believed uh, that the, even that body will be uh, will be made alive or something so anyway she said you know the husband said read that scripture right now and she opened it and she was reading it and she said she could hardly stand by the window she moved to the window to just to try to make herself feel a little better she said i was reading it reading the scripture and as i read the scripture i discovered that wow i can't believe this I finished reading the scripture and something just went all across my body. It's like every pain disappeared. Every weight was lifted. Clarity came to my mind. Wellness came to my body. I was instantly healed supernaturally. You know, God was healing me gradually through the natural means of eating. And I had prayed before now. Everybody had prayed for me. I'd done everything possible. But at the right time, after doing everything necessary, you know, by faith, just people, godly people prayed for me. Right, reading the scripture, by word of revelation, I just got supernaturally healed. <laughs> Бога. Но я на этом не остановилась, потому что сам пастор Сандей нас учил быть глубокими и копать проблему. Я взяла свои анализы крови и начала проверять, ну, каких, чего не хватает. И я увидела, что у меня очень густая кровь, я увидела, что у меня нехватка кальция, калия и магния в организме. И вот эти витамины нужно было добавить, потому что Бог меня исцелил, но если я не восполню вот это на физическом уровне, я я опять провалюсь туда же. Mm -hmm. вот. И еще вот этот доктор мне посоветовал, потому что у меня был, было давление высокое, и э, нижнее давление у меня, у меня было высокое, и э, она говорит, что это проблема не в сердце, это проблема в почках. Нужно mm -hmm. почистить почки. Mm -hmm. И она сказала, чем нужно почистить почки. И я действительно подошла к этому очень глубоко. Я восполнила эти витамины. Я почистила свои почки. И у меня давление стало 110 на 80. Давление 90, нижнее давление, оно всегда вызывает аритмию. Сейчас, минутку. You see, and uh, by the way, if you have not yet shared the link to this message, by the way, many people might be healed as a result of this program today. Because, you know, God is releasing an amazing anointing, healing anointing, just, you know, by this program, by this testimony that we are hearing right now, and the word of knowledge that has been released. So I see that not too many people have copied the, have shared the link yet. Uh, you, you know, about 100 people have not yet shared it. So please go ahead and uh, share the link. It will be a blessing to a lot of people. It could be a blessing to you. Uh, you might need it. You might need to watch this program again. So go look, look under your video. You will see the share button there. Let's quickly go and share it, okay? <laughs> anyway, so uh, she said, I was healed that day, but like I said, Pastor Sunday has taught us very well to be detailed people. Pastor Sunday has taught us to be, you know, normally in churches, when people are healed like that, they just go ahead and testify, and especially, you know, and then just go and rejoicing and happy, and by the time they realize it, in about five years' time or ten years' time, they are sick again, or another sickness has come to overtake them. So for me not to have that, not to experience that, of, that kind of reoccurrence, I needed to follow uh, the teachings of being thorough that pastor has taught us. And so what I did, I went to see the doctor, 
and the doctor did an examination on me gave me the certificate that i'm healed but also saw the difference between how i was and how i am now so that they could tell what was actually wrong with my body what were the deficiencies that i had so and i took that to another doctor that said okay with all these deficiencies that i had what with this kind of health that i used to have is because i didn't have enough uh magnesium i didn't have enough uh calcium and i didn't have you know just a list of uh, uh vitamins uh, and then that is concerning the heart then they also discovered that my uh lung poshkada you know not lung uh, or like kidney my kidney had you know was dirty you know i needed to clean my kidney and so you know apart from uh being just healed now you it's better for you not to just be healed of what you have been healed of but to actually check you know put your whole body in order so my heart was healed but i didn't know that i had a problem with my kidney because i was running about with my heart so god has healed my heart but because i was trying to be thorough like pastor sonny has taught us so i went for a total checkup now and i was discovering that you know i needed to you know, upgrade my health in every area and uh, and that is what we need to do you know, otherwise if i had not done that i would it would have been a few years later maybe the heart is no more pain in me but it will be the kidney that is bothering me so i needed to begin to eat properly so the fact that god took me through the uh, uh, through the process of eating well and natural food that was all necessary because even after god had healed me now i'm still abiding by the rules of eating natural food i am still abiding by eating the right i'll be taking the right vitamins why because after you are healed it's good for you to change your, your lifestyle it's good for you to change your eating style and eating habit so when uh, i'm healed right now for me not to have a recurrence or a relapse i got to eat properly right now so thank god that god did not heal me immediately so sometimes we don't understand why god does not heal us immediately why is it that god could not did not heal me why is it that is it that he couldn't do it no he wanted me to learn he wanted to take me through some lessons he wanted me to understand what i didn't know he wanted the sickness to be a time of learning and a time of education for me he wanted so that uh, through, through through the sickness i would discover uh, a better way to health that i would discover the natural with natural uh, uh, healing process of the body and i will also discover the power of vegetable and fruit and also that i will discover uh you know uh how to eat right and how to change your life eating lifestyle and also uh how to you know take the right vitamins and things like that so all that you know what you know while i was looking for healing i studied them so now that i'm healed i still you know you know i was i still do the proper eating thing because then that keeps all my organism in proper shape День до операции, когда мне был назначен день до операции, я поехала к врачу кардиологическое отделение и попросила, чтобы мне перенесли на месяц, потому что я хочу понаблюдать за собой. Я так сказала доктору, но сама я просто копала и копала, и я восполняла свой организм витаминами. Мне переназначили на 27 января уже 2016 года, и вот 26 я к нему перезвонила и сказала, что я полностью отказываюсь от операции, и сама 2 февраля я поехала в институт кардиологии и с меня полностью сняли этот диагноз потому что я полностью здорова so you know you know i had refused to do the operation right but when you refuse to do the operation like that the doctors will still give you a chance they would say okay maybe if you think again or if you have a rethink so what they did in my own case was that they gave me a date that before a, a term that i must be, come back before a certain date uh, to if i still want to do the operation so i called them back just before that day and but, but before then i had gone to another hospital to the institute of heart to uh, like a station hospital where you know they specialize on earth so and i had gone to do a thorough medical checkup 
and they had confirmed that there was no disease anymore and that I was totally healed. So I called back the doctors and I gave them the news that I was totally healed and they couldn't believe it. They were just totally shocked. Потом, когда с меня сняли диагноз, Бог мне дал идею начать клубы здоровья в разных городах, то есть в нашей церкви. Я начала начинать эти клубы здоровья и оживлять те клубы здоровья, которые есть в городах у нас, wow. в, наш, в наших дочерних церквях. И люди начали получать исцеление. Mm. И это еще вылилось в мое финансовое благословение. Я начала зарабатывать деньги. Бог так благословил. Wow. Первый месяц, когда я начала работать, вот с февраля я начала работать и открывать вот эти клубы здоровья по городам. Мы открыли э, в городе Звенеск Нигородки клуб здоровья. Мы открыли в Фастове, мы открыли в Чигирине, мы открыли в Сумах. Вот с понедельника открываем Лысенку и Житомир у нас уже на подходе. Да? Я начала зарабатывать деньги. Первый месяц я заработала 3,5 тысячи. Второй месяц я заработала 6. Третий месяц я заработала 21 тысячу. Потом летом я отдыхала, потому что надо было детям там помочь с отдыхом. И вот с 1 сентября заниматься клубами здоровья, я заработала 10 тысяч, 18 тысяч, то есть моя зарплата начала увеличиваться, это начало приносить мне благословение и пассивный доход. Просто Бог вот эту проблему, Он обратил ну, в огромное благословение. Пастор Сандей писал в книге и лидерская школа о кризисе, что любой кризис мы должны обращать ну, не, в, не в проблемы, а в возможности. Смотреть на любую, на любую проблему, как на ступеньку возвышения, как на возможность. И я действительно посмотрела на это через призму книжек пастыря Сандея, там «Алло, я ищу проблемы». Я начала превращать вот эти проблемы ну, в возможности, и это начало приносить и возвышать меня и приносить мне ну, э, доход, пассивный доход в мою жизнь. So after I got my certificate and clearance from the doctors that I'm totally healthy and healed, or healed and I started living right, but by this time I already know the principles of health. So, so uh, I, you know, Pastor Sunday had taught us that um, every crisis is a possibility. That we shouldn't look at crisis as a tragedy that crises are opportunities for us to change to be better to learn and that we should always you know find out ways to turn our crisis into a blessing so um that is what i began to do pastor did a whole leadership training for us about crisis that we should have the right attitude to crisis and to problems and the problems are not tragedy really they are real blessing the problems and crisis are announcement of a new level of blessings and that we should learn to convert them uh, it's just about conversion and about the attitude and i yeah it's a book on that as well so i started using that and i said okay now that i'm healed now that i'm healthy i already know what one of my gains you know i told you i learned the loss of health the loss of eating well and the loss of uh you know healthy lifestyle so i've gained knowledge if i had not been sick like that i would not have gained that knowledge but thanks to that sickness i now have that wisdom so i now know how to live right how to eat right and i could even teach others that's what i discovered that okay this crisis has not come to destroy me it has come to teach me something for myself but i should use my crisis as a platform to be a blessing to others that's what pastor has taught us so you know, my crisis should not just go like that my troubles should not just go in vain my problems my crisis my troubles must never be in vain i must learn to exploit my problems to take advantage of my my situation and to change it into uh into a stepping stone into my stepping stone for greater things that god will allow and allowed any problem in my life to turn me into a better person. So this sickness, as bad as it appeared and as horrible as it might look, is a, is a stepping stone for me to move into something greater. God wants to give me something more than what I had lost. And so he had given me the knowledge, he had given me this, the know-how, the skills, and now I'm starting another ministry. And so that's what I started. I started to a ministry that is called Club of Health Clubs. So I started, I decided to start health clubs, not just in my city, but to start to have health clubs all over the country. So I decided that 
this tragedy that I've gone through must become profitable. This tragedy must become beneficial, not just to me, but to humanity at last. You see, this is one lesson God wants to teach all of us. Any tragedy, any crisis that we might find ourselves in should be converted and to become our stepping stones, to become our, our uh, elevation, to become our Mm -hmm. our our uh yeah our uh advancement in life so so i started this club this health club all over the country and what what my intention was initially was just to teach other people how to live a healthy lifestyle as well so that people would not make my mistake i give my testimony but they don't just give testimony that, that god can do it god can do it god will heal you so everybody if he needs the kind of testimony that people give in church that god will heal you god will heal you so everybody is waiting till they are sick and they are having hope that god will heal them but why should you wait for you to be sick to have hope that god will heal you why don't you learn what i've learned why you don't i share with you now how you could live your lifestyle so that you will not have that kind of situation so that you will never have to deal with that kind of process that i went through so that you will be you will avoid the sickness in the first place talk less of asking god to heal you so my sickness gave me that know-how that knowledge and now i could share it with others to cut a long story short I started opening these uh, clubs all over the country and I did, what I never expected was that I was even going to be making money in the process. That was what I never expected. Because I, I, I knew I was going to bless people. I knew these teachings were going to help other people, it, that people were going to be blessed, people are going to be helped, but I never knew it was going to become a, a, an, a, a, an income generating uh, uh, you know, s, you know, system for me. And uh, you know, the first month I made three thousand. Second month I made six thousand. Third month I made nine thousand. Then eighteen thousand, fifteen thousand. Then eighteen thousand, twenty-one thousand. And I just started growing financially from there, more than what I ever made in my businesses. Why? Because I was now willing to give of myself and my life, my heart, my lessons, my uh, wisdom to share with people. And it was even giving me money. So you know, when you are ready to serve people and to minister to people with what God has taught you, you know, you, know, you will never be able to predict how much of God's blessing God will be giving to you. Da. <laughs> Давайте. Я очень благодарна Богу, благодарна пастору, я благодарна Богу, что мы в этой церкви, я благодарна Богу, что здесь каждый может состояться в этой церкви, я благодарна Богу за то, что здесь осуществляются мечты, здесь Бог творит чудеса. Бог живой в этой церкви. Я очень благодарна и за учение, и за все то, что делает пастор Сандей и пастор Бося, за то, что они вкладывают в нас, и мы можем ходить в вере, мы можем достигать, мы можем получать то, что нам принадлежит. Класс. Well, I want to use this opportunity to really thank God and thank my pastors, Pastor Bosse, who is my local pastor, my direct pastor, and Pastor Sunday, who is my senior pastor, I want to really thank them and thank God for this church, that I belong to a church where we are taught to think, that I belong to a church where we are taught to question, that I belong to a church where we are taught to reason, that I belong to a church where we are taught to use our mind, to use critical thinking, to use uh, you know, our senses, to analyze what's going on, to ask questions. And thanks to that, I was able to not just get my health back, but I was also able to get the key to live in health in future, as you know, into, in, into my future. But more than that, to, you know, to even give the gift of health to many other people. So I'm so grateful for all you have done, Pastor, for, all, for your family, for what Pastor Buster is doing, is doing and what I've done for this church. And uh, thank you for everything that my life has become, thanks to your teaching. That is Allah. Sister Allah Makarovna. Allah is her name. So if you have not yet shared this testimony, you need to. 
this will be a huge blessing to a lot of people so look for your share button under the video and try to share the the message let's go ahead and share this message uh, i'm sure it will be a blessing to a lot of you uh, let me see some of what you are writing here oh alexei astakov is here that's our pastor in moscow is really pastor sunday school yeah Emma Wasfi say yes, eating mainly plant food diet is proven to heal thousands of testimonies. Right. Emma Wafley said, God does miracles. I know he did it for me with cancer. Uh, no doctor intervention. I did what you are talking about. I did the research and changed my eating. Started making life changes. I got the miracle. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Harmonica, yes, eating right is really good. It cures so many diseases. God can heal through that. Yep. T.Y. said, that was an amazing word of knowledge time. Yeah, thank God. Now we, we're waiting for all the miracle, all the testimonies for, from the Word of Knowledge to come back. So come back with your testimonies, share your stories. G.D. Craig said to the Word of Knowledge, I receive my healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, Mudupa also said, I receive the hearing of my, the healing of my head as well. Amen. Glory to God. Emma was who says, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, healed, be healed, be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. That's to the word of knowledge. Sam David said, God is two, two for seven, good and unlimited. Yep. Esther, say thank you, Lord, for the power of your deliverance. T.Y., wow, Jesus confirms the words he, speak. he speaks with signs and wonders because we are talking about Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He is confirming it with your words, with the words of knowledge, with signs and wonders following. We worship you, Master. We enthrone you here today. Amen. Yep. Uh, that was uh, Ifeoma said, Awesome God, I thank you. We all thank you, Lord. And Anthony Shine do said, I receive my healing in Jesus' name. T.Y. is saying, pray in tongues. We say yes, Lord, amen, for every case that's been mentioned. <laughs> yep. Jua says, Mashe, say, washing from the Bahamas. Wonderful. See why I say yes, I sense it too. So there is a big healing gift manifestation today, in manifestation today. Yeah, you're right. Shola is saying, wow, what an awesome God we serve. In Goya Sharis, wow, 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 God is amazing. Alexei Astakov, Christianity is a lifestyle, not a religion. Modupe, God is great. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Omonike, God the healer. He sent his word and healed us. Thank you, Lord. Juva said, I'm healed. 
Stefan, I mean Stella Nuhu, awesome God in our midst this evening. Glory. Thank you, Dr. Adelaja, for being the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you have not yet shared this link, please go ahead and do that. Our money case, our God is great. He said he will never share his glory with anyone. Glory to God. Uh, he sent his word and he healed them of their diseases. Ufu Omar said we need to maintain health and wellness by right eating. Yeah. Modupa said this woman got healed without laying on of hands, no anointing oil, and they, no, just applying the word of God. Alexei says, I'm very blessed by this testimony. See why I say, wow, what a testimony. Oh, Monica, sometimes God makes us to go through some situation in life so that we will be wiser. Thank God for this sister's sickness. It made her to search for wisdom in how to eat right and know more about the principle of healthy living. Thank you, God. And thank you, Pastor Sunday, for all your teachings. God bless you. She Sandra, awesome testimony. My trials are blessings in disguise. Yep. Faye Bell say yes, I have confirmation. Now I'm going to start my journey to assist others. This is my lesson today. TY, awesome God, how great thou art. You are God, mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holiness. Lord, we bow and worship you. Alexei says, uh, Pastor Sunday also taught me to use my problems to be a blessing. Beautiful. Uh, T.Y., our blessings are tied to the service we give to mankind our core call, through our core callings and become a solution provider. Joseph Oyewole, every crisis is an opportunity and we are not to look at crisis and problems as tragedy. Our crisis can be one of the greatest opportunities if handled correctly. John Lucky, we ask too much from God, even though we got the answer within us. Wonderful testimony and teaching. Uh, Monique, thank you so very much, Sister Allah is her name, Allah. Allah for your life testimony. Nikki Christian, healthy lifestyle is the best way to, to go. She looks so young. Yeah. What is your way? Oh, she's more like that way, Gladity. Goya Sharis, thank you so much, Allah. Your story is very motivating and inspiring. I'm honestly going to upgrade my diet even further after hearing this. Studying the loss of health is now on my list of self-development goals. Ifeoma, thank you so much, beautiful woman of God, for sharing this wonderful testimony with us. More blessings to you. Fai Faye uh, Belt said, a miracle, uh, I'm going to change, I'm a miracle, I'm going to change my way of eating. Nikki said, thank you so much, Sister Allah, for sharing the awesome testimony. Sylvie Nkongo, yes, we are healed to be healers in our generation. Joseph Oyewole, wonderful evening, Hala. Thanks for wonderful testimonies. Wow, this is complete Christianity. Thanks, Dr. Sunday, for the great, awesome time on this platform. Jade Munsaka, inspiring testimony. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Uh, God bless you, Dr. Adilaja, for the word of knowledge. Vivian Taylor, awesome testimony of how you need to think, research, and not panic when having a health issue issue. Uh, T.Y. Moore, what an amazing testimony. Thank God for your life, madam, and a God-fearing faith, believing husband, great faith, giant, Pastor Bosse, and Dr. Dela Jawa, what a mighty God we serve. Emma Wasfi, and I got healed by God. I never had to sow a seed for my miracle. <laughs> that is true. No manipulations, right? <laughs> Faye Belt, thank you for your obedience, Dr. Adelaja. 
Bernadette Egbufo, what a wonderful God. Thank you for your healing. Thank God for your healing. Deborah called Sister Allah, you are an encourager with your story. Thank you so much. This is a message in a mess. God bless you. I do all like this. I'm blessed and encouraged by your testimony, Sister Allah. Thanks for the insight of the importance of eating healthy. John Lucky, I think I have to relocate to Ukraine and then relocate to Nigeria with Dr. Adelaja. Practical teachings, practical healing. Glory to God. E.D. Peter, great testimony, great healing lesson. Emma Wasfi, sickness is a blessing. If it doesn't kill you, it will change your life forever. Beautiful. T.Y., God bless you, sir, for the word of knowledge, the manifestation of the gifts of healing. I'm so wild. Thank you, Jesus, for visiting us today. So much to discover about you, man of God. Marie Shell Ruiz, I'm so blessed, Pastor. Thank you, Jesus. It's really working. Sylvie in Congo, thank you, Pastor Adelaja, for saying yes to the Lord. G.D. Craig, yes, Dr. Adelaja, thanks for the word of knowledge. Very accurate. God bless you, sir. Hello, Pastor uh, Paul David. Hello, everyone. I love you all. Like, Barak, what? Gra? Well, I don't understand that. Nkiru, the fact is that we all have heard of healthy eating at least once, but we ignore it until our head eat the wall. God have mercy on me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Allah. Topsy, I'm so blessed by this wonderful woman's testimony. God bless her son through the application of financial principles. Her mother was healed by believing in God's word, not by bringing $1,000 fruits and stories. Emma Wasfi is part of our work with God to look after our body. It's our temple. Um, Kiro, Pearl, darling, you are so sweet. Okay, that's for Pearl. Pearl. John Lucky, so you are healed and even start making money from your past problem. What a wonderful testimony. Yep. If you have not shared the link, go ahead and share it. And I uh, will see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I will be continuing my to talk speak. I mean, my message on uh, how to win in life. How to win in life. And that will be about strategic thinking. God bless you guys. Bye.